Well, what do you know? More proof that Donald Trump is a Jesuit and a Catholic. He says here, Trump says he's the best president in history of the church and calls Catholic leaders. Now, I know Brian talked about this in one of his other videos, and of course Trump does this thing where he goes to this idol of John Paul II, this pope who's now in hell right now, they made him a saint, but he goes to this idol, him and his, his wife, and they bow down to, well, they don't bow down to it, but they, they pay homage to this idol, this national shrine in Washington, you know, to this idol of, of this former pope. But, I'll read this. President Donald Trump identified himself as the best president in the history of the Catholic Church in conference call for Catholic leaders and educators Saturday where he warned that issues in the sake of the upcoming presidential election, particularly on abortion and religious liberty, have never been more important for the church. <laughs> religious liberty? The Catholic Church standing for religious liberty? I don't think so. Um, the early Christians came to America, well not the early Christians, the early Baptists you could say, I guess, came to America to escape Roman Catholic tyranny over in Europe. That's why they came to America. And prior to the Constitution, Catholics were actually banned from many states. Uh, there are some states that, like, if you're, you couldn't even be a Jesuit priest. There are some states where, if you're a Jesuit priest, you're banned from that state. Uh, the, the Catholics were virtually like banned from America up until the Constitution. Because the American Christians knew the danger that Roman Catholicism posed to basic liberties and freedoms you know, described in Scripture. Because there's liberty in Christ Jesus. There's a verse that talks about that. And the Roman Catholic Church is a big threat to that. Because they want to rule over the they want to rule over the flock. They want to rule over the congregation. They're like the Nicolaitans. They want to rule over the assembly. So the Christians knew that. So when they came to America and colonized America, they made sure that Roman Catholic influence would not take over America. That's why in the nineteen twenties and even the eighteen hundreds, um, Roman Catholicism was was rightfully seen as like an, as a danger to freedom and rightfully seen as as the religion of the Antichrist and the Pope uh, was banned from America. If, I think it was till the 1980s the Pope was banned from from entering like set, setting foot in America because they knew that Roman Catholics their loyalty was to the Pope not to their own nation. So the reason why they would not they didn't want Roman Catholics getting in political office because official Catholic doctrines does state that. And Catholics first loyalties to the Pope, well, not to God, but to the Pope, you know, because they worship that guy. So the Pope was banned from America, and Catholics were they made sure that the American people did everything they could to prevent Catholics from getting into public office because they knew that the Roman Catholic Church is is probably more of a threat to religious freedom than atheism, the sodomite agenda, and radical Islam combined. You know, combine all three, and the Roman Catholic Church is a much bigger danger to religious freedom. So. I mean, it's basically fascism when you let Roman Catholicism rule. But religious liberty, yeah, like the Catholic Church cares about that. And he says here in this other article, Trump says he's the best president in the history of the church in call with Catholic leaders. He goes down there, and you know, abortion and religious liberty. It's kind of funny because I was thinking of abortion. The Catholic Church claims to be, you know, very pro-life, but Roman Catholics are getting abortion in massive numbers. Isn't that crazy? I mean, if they're, if they're really preaching that, if they're really just preaching so hard against abortion, why are Roman Catholics getting abortions in such such ma such massive numbers? You know, and if you look behind who is behind the legalization of abortion in America, it was all it was all Jesuit Republican, by the way, Republican uh, nominees, Supreme Court judges, who were behind this this legalizing abortion in America. Yeah, the Roman Catholic Church claims to be pro life, but then they were behind the legalization of abortion. Yeah, sure. I don't think so. Then, of course, I'm show this video to you guys. Trump, I mean, not Trump. I mean, well, Trump is in the video, but Brian brought this out in his video. Let me just play this. Full screen it. Their sound. See, he's playing, he's paying homage to this, this idol of Pope John Paul, who's now in hell, burning. Yeah, you get the picture. Trump is a Roman Catholic. You know, he's not. He's not, I mean, and most of the evangelicals are just in bed with the Roman Catholic Church. Just that simple. Let me show you some. End off with some scripture. Just proving to you that it kind of makes a problem for this whole thing of America being Babylon. Because if America is Babylon, that means the rulers are Roman Catholics. Because Trump is a, clearly a Roman Catholic. So even if America was Babylon, the Jesuits are still the ones in control. But America is not Babylon. America uh, submits to Mystery Babylon, which is the Roman Catholic Church. Revelation 17, 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. 
Vatican City. They reign over the kings of the earth. So, uh, and you see this thing, always oh, keep America great again. Uh, America's not going to be great until Jesus Christ comes back and sets up his thousand year kingdom and rules from Jerusalem. Because this world is wicked. America is a wicked nation. It will never be great until Jesus Christ sets up his kingdom from Jerusalem and rules for a thousand years. And he is the king, basically. That, that's the only time where America will ever be great again. And that's the only time the world will ever be great again. So, yeah, don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.